excuse me, I've heard all I need to hear. Can we get the U.S. Marshals in here, please? I'm going to take him into custody. Yeah. Yeah, the Marshals. Mr. Defendant, you are an absolute menace to society. I have had enough. You're going into custody. A federal judge told that to a client of ours last February, three days after our client hired us, which suffice to say probably wasn't the greatest start to our relationship. What happened was prior to retaining our team and unbeknownst to his lawyer, a phenomenal lawyer, unbeknownst to all of us, he had been reaching out to some some of his investors turned victims. And he reached out, he said, with good intentions to apologize, to say that he was sorry for running this scam, this ruse. But of course, the victims didn't see it that way. It triggered them when they heard from him. These victims reached out to the prosecutor just like that. He has a hearing taken into custody. He called me that day from the detention center and he's like, what do you think? I'm like, well, it's not great, dude. The only thing that you should feel fortunate about right now are two things. One, you're in custody, so you're getting credit for time served. That's a good thing. And two, you're lucky, your terrific lawyer, Diane Bass, with whom we work in love, you're lucky she was fortunate to secure you a phenomenal deal with a cap of 60 months in federal prison. <laughs> because as of today, you're going to get 60 months in federal prison. Thankfully, you have eight, nine, or 10 months until you get sentenced. I hope you use this time well. He's like, well, I want to use the time well. I'm like, well, if not, I should send you back your money because if you're not going to do the work, our team can't help you. We can't change the past, can't guarantee what will happen. Though I predict, my man, you're going to get 60 months in federal prison. He's like, I've seen the light. I get it. I'm going to change. And I believed him because it is not uncommon for people to begin to change once they are standing for count separated from their family. Indeed, about an hour ago, I put up a video, a YouTube short talking about those initial hours after I was sentenced to federal prison. And it sort of hit me. We wish it hits us sooner. I wish we could all take action sooner. But it doesn't change that some people wait until they are standing for count, as was the case with our client. But he had a golden opportunity to begin mitigating. By the way, welcome to our channel. If you're looking for the greatest sentencing mitigation advice in the history of the world that's ever been existed on any planet, you are in the right spot. So if you agree, like, subscribe, and comment. We're so happy to to have you here. So now that he's in custody with eight, nine, or 10 months out to sentencing, he's like, what can I do? I'm like, well, what we should probably do is consider exactly what the judge said to you because too few defendants consider the stakeholders. They consider themselves or they buy into mistaken presumptions. It's too early to prepare. That's going to lead into the advice I'll close with at the end. So if you know this judge thinks you are a menace, what I would do is not talk about what you're going to do. I would create change every single day with hopes it compels this judge to give you less than 60 months, which is, again, what I would condition your family. That Tell them you're getting 60 months in prison. Okay, I can do that. What can I do? Great. We are going to send you, at the recommendation of my business partner, Michael Santos, our Preparing for Success After Prison course, the workbook. What's in it? Good question. There's 30 lessons with hundreds of questions that's going to require you to work. And if you're not willing to do the work or if you're going to give us happy talk and cliches, this ain't the course for you. You're going to get 60 months in federal prison. I don't care how much money you paid our team because you've dug yourself a hole. And if you're not willing to do the work, you're going to get 60 months in federal prison. I don't want to get 60 months in federal prison. I'm willing to do the work. God knows I have enough time here, which of course he now does in a detention center with fewer programs, fewer resources, whole lot of TV. It's like, I have a whole lot of time here and I don't want to be bored. And I want to show this judge I ain't no menace to society. Great. We send him the workbook. And just like that, after that switch went off, after he was taken into custody in front of his wife and kids, begins writing, my goodness, prolifically. Every single day, documenting and memorializing the journey, answering and writing and sharing it via email, answering and writing and sharing it through email, answering some questions here like, how can living with integrity while in custody help you prepare for a successful life after federal prison? You've talked about making amends to victims. What plans are you putting in place every day while in custody to make that goal a reality? Describe a person you know who succeeded in one area of your life but failed in another. Describe a justice-impacted person you know who failed. You know what he said in that answer? I'm that person who failed because I committed a crime. I pled guilty. Then I doubled down against the request or demand of my pretrial services officer and reach out to victims. I'm a two-time loser. I would sentence me harshly if I were a judge. Here's my path and plan to do better. What action steps are you taking again today to make your victims whole? How can you bring mentors into your life from federal prison? Write at least three paragraphs that explain the steps you have taken over the past month to move you closer to the success or the person you'd like to become. So through this, he is writing frenetically. 
every single day and we're building like a catalog. We're time stamping where he is today, where he plans to go, how he's growing day by day, week over week, month over month. And he's like, man, this being in custody, I think has been a good thing for me because it's requiring me to focus. I am getting credit for time served, which is a good reminder to all of you. If you're watching this, you know what that means? You're not in custody, which means you have an opportunity to build and memorialize a record, to document why you're worthy of leniency, to show your judge you are not a menace. But how many of you do that? Truly do that. Timestamp where you are today, the 14th of February, 2024. Happy Valentine's Day, by the way. How many of you really timestamp who you are, what you've learned, and what you're going to do over the weeks, months, and years to come, and then share that progress with stakeholders? Nah, you don't do it because you buy into this myth it's too early to prepare. My lawyer doesn't think it's a good idea. Lawyer doesn't think it's a good idea to mitigate. Lawyer doesn't think it's a good idea to change the government's version of events. U.S. attorneys working full time with our tax dollars to send you to prison, yet it's too early to prepare, too early to mitigate. I'm going to get around to it. You're not right for our team. Can't help you. Don't want to help you. We want to help with people who, despite making bad choices, want to change the narrative because their wife and kids are watching. And if I'm passionate, you want to know why? Because you all don't get it. And if I'm failing to convey it to you, it's my fault. I accept responsibility for that. But if any of you think it's too early, well, I'm going to close with that message at the end, as animated as I am on this Valentine's Day before I get ready to take my beautiful wife to lunch here in a little bit. So he's building, memorializing, and documenting, getting closer to sentencing. Now, thankfully, he has an awesome lawyer who agrees that correct messaging should be shared with the probation officer. So what does he do? He begins to share some of his preparing for success after prison course before he's even sentenced with his probation officer. Yep, great idea. She can see the change and transformation from prison. Probably a good idea that you begin to go through this course. I don't do sales anymore. You want to schedule a call with Alec? with our team, do so. Or don't do it. Your choice, your life, your mitigation. You want to wait and too early? Your choice. All good. I want you to be like our dude who made a bad decision, was in prison. He's like, I have a wife and kids. My judge thinks I'm a menace. I'm going to change the narrative. I'm going to tell you what happened here in a few minutes. You should probably go through this course. Presuming your goal is the shortest sentence. is salesy as some people tell me that sounds. I don't think it sounds salesy. I think it's honest. Shares the work with the probation officer. Some of that work, of course, along with his narrative, gets into the probation report. Ah, now we're getting closer to sentencing. Weeks, months away inside of this detention center. And the sentencing hearing comes, and guess what we did? Yes, yes, that is a big affirmative, as my older brother Todd Lewis Paperni likes to say. Yes, we shared the work with the probation officer and the sentencing judge. And to those of you who say, well, it's too much work. It's too much copy. It's too long. Ain't nobody going to read it. We have clients that go to prison, go to sentencing hearings with books our team helps them write, with full full manuscripts. Maybe they don't read every page, but they can flip through it. See that you did it. To the person who texted me last week that said I'm indicted, but my lawyer said it's too early to prepare. Imagine what you could have built and memorialized and documented over the last week with the goal of sharing that growth with the judge. You're not right for our team. You don't want to do the work. You want to outsource, you want to pay $500,000 retainers and lawyers, former U.S. attorneys who you believe are going to get you the deal and you don't have to do nothing. Not right for our team. And of course, we share this work with the sentencing judge. And in the thumbnail of this video, you might see this image of Carl Jung, a Swiss psychiatrist, I think was born in 1875, who yours truly studied at the University of Southern California. So I knew the name. And at the sentencing hearing, the judge didn't specifically reference Carl Jung, but he did reference a quote that I recognized from Carl Jung that said, you are what you do, not what you say you'll do. Aha. That's when he knew we all knew in his orange uniform from the detention center, he wasn't getting 60 months in federal prison. You are what you do, not what you say you'll do. How many of you say, I'm sorry, I'll never do it again. I'm going to make amends to my victims. I'm going to do better. But you don't memorialize. You don't really do it. It just kind of sounds good. Let's own that. How many of you truly memorialize and build and grow and timestamp? Your Honor, this is where I am today. And this is where I'm going to be in three months. And this is where I'm going to be in nine months. And then you actually do it, which is why it's hard work. And you cannot buy an outcome. You can't. You have to do the work. And if you don't want to do the work, I'm going to say it again as much as my marketing guy said I shouldn't say this. We can't help you. We don't want to help you. We don't. We don't. 
So as soon as the judge said that, we knew he wasn't getting 60 months. The question was, how long would he get? And I will tell you, he got 37 months in federal prison. Phenomenal outcome. Phenomenal outcome because he was getting 60 months in federal prison. Still in custody. He's going to serve his sentence. Some more good news. By virtue of documenting his journey through, through the preparing for success after prison course, which is a sales pitch, by the way, because our team can help you get through it or do it on your own. Just do it. Memorialize it some way. Of course, he gets 37 months in federal prison. His lawyer, who's shrewd and smart, of course, helped him prepare along with our team for the probation interview. So we have any medical issues, any substance abuse in the probation report. And you know, you know what I'm getting at here, people. You all know the buzzwords. You're on everybody's list. You watch every marketer that talks about prison and all this stuff. You know what's coming. Gets a recommendation from the drug program. Won't go to Sheridan because the program's suspended there right now. And he's going to get transferred to Yankton to do the drug program. And on a 37-month sentence, I presume he'll serve... Well, he's got to be in prison for at least another nine months because he's been in custody. So that's kind of the downside, right? So after he gets to Yankton, immediately into the program... Nine months later, he's going to be released to the halfway house. Think about that for a moment. He acted. He did the work. No happy talk. He invested the time he created. He shared with everyone. Vulnerable. Honest. I was a thief. I was a criminal. I should be held accountable. If I were you, your honor, I would sentence me harshly too. You called me a menace. Here's what I'm going to do to make amends, to do better. A business I want to build. Mentors I'm cultivating and growing and proving worthy of the love and support of my family. Think about that. Y'all don't do it. You don't do it. Some do. People that retain our team who want to change the narrative, who don't believe in stalling, delaying, which is how I will close this video. You should probably schedule a call with our team and immediately get enrolled in the Preparing for Success After Prison course. It's 10 o'clock here on February 4th. If you act within minutes of posting this video, you can get going. And then I'm going to say this. If you don't want to do the work, if you believe it's too early to prepare, the lawyer's got it all covered. My lawyer doesn't like the idea. My lawyer doesn't believe that I should be mitigating, even though that goes totally against what we've heard from federal judges, that you can watch on YouTube. Judge Boo said they discount what a lawyer says because they're paid to say it. And if a lawyer is watching this and that hurts your feelings, I don't care. I go to the end user, the person in crisis who can't sleep, who's suicidal. We work with great lawyers who don't have an ego like Diane Bass who say, you have your role, I have my role. Correct. Lead which is how I'll close. If you don't want to do that work, I want you to go to prison today. Just go in right now. J get credit for time served. Literally, like you should call your lawyer, ask the judge and say, like, I just want to go in today. I'm already in prison, Your Honor. I think about it 24 hours. I can't have sex. I eat too much. I can't eat enough. I'm miserable. You're already in jail. You just don't get credit. Just go in right now. I literally think you should just surrender to prison if you're not willing to do the work. Because the only reason you should stay out and not get credit for time served or go in right now, if that makes any, I think it makes sense. The only reason you're out is to do work that ensures you get a shorter sentence. If not, if you're not going to do that work and mitigate and lead and do exactly what Judge Boo told us to do, which is the defendant has to do the lion's share of the work, spits fly now. That's how passionate I am. Or Judge Pearson saying, defendants need to treat sentencing like a full-time job. Or that old curmudgeon judge in Texas who said to me, if it ain't documented, it didn't happen. Carl Young, you are what you do, not what you say you'll do. Are you getting it if you're not willing to do that work? I want you to call your judge or call your lawyer, get taken into custody immediately. That's the most important message I have ever shared in a YouTube video. If you're not willing to mitigate and do the work and lead and create a new record that shows why you're worthy of leniency through your own actions, you should immediately go into custody and at least get credit for time served. That's it. I'm out. I'm taking my beautiful, awesome, gorgeous wife to lunch on Valentine's Day before we get the kids. Thank you for coming to White Collar Advice.